I think the safe assumption for an investor is that over the next 100 years, the currency is going to zero. That's my working hypothesis. What did Charlie Munger say that the stock market will crash? Is his prediction accurate? Has he shared any strategies on how to protect our portfolio and ourselves during the crash? Yes, he has stated a couple of strategies, so make sure to stay tuned until the end to find out. That said, let's take a closer look. Billionaire Charlie Munger, one of history's best investors and Warren Buffett's right-hand man at Berkshire Hathaway, recently prophesied a terrible fall during the Daily Journal's recent annual meeting. What we're getting is heinous excess and national danger. Everyone enjoys it since it resembles a group of people getting wasted at a party. They're having so much fun that they don't consider the repercussions. Because of the terrible excess, there will eventually be significant difficulties, as has always been the case in the past. This alarming warning follows Mr. Munger's previous warning of a lost decade for investors, underscoring to investors that this is definitely a concern on Mr. Munger's mind. Why may he be apprehensive about the stock market's current prospects? First and foremost, interest rates are much more likely to rise rather than fall in the near term, increasing the force of gravity in market prices, as his colleague Warren Buffett likes to remark. In fact, if inflation remains at current four-decade highs, interest rates will almost certainly be forced higher. Second, with equity valuations already at record highs and inflation rates rising, generating impressive real returns is becoming more difficult, as multiple contraction is becoming more likely than multiple advancement due to the likelihood of rising interest rates in response to rising inflation, and the high inflation rate raises the bar for corporate growth and dividend payments to yield a real return at the inflation. Third, the Buffett Indicator, one of Buffett's preferred indicators for judging how attractive the aggregate market is, indicates that the market is excessively overvalued and increasingly likely to provide decimal returns to the future. Last but not least, Mr. Munger's reference to wretched excess in his remarks implies that there is currently a significant misallocation of capital owing to skewed interest rates, enormous money printing, and government intervention in the economy. In reality, Mr. Munger remarked at the same Daily Journal annual meeting, I would argue that venture capital is squandering money too quickly, and that there is a significant wretched excess in venture capital and other types of private equity. We have a stock exchange which some people treat like a casino. Nothing has ever been quite like what we're doing right now. We know from experience in other countries that printing too much money results in disastrous consequences. The market fall presents an opportunity for investors to purchase equities at bargain prices. They have the potential to outperform the market by delivering significant long-term returns in this manner. Emotions, on the other hand, can easily get in the way. Falling stock prices may cause many investors to follow their peers in selling quality enterprises rather than buying them. They may also fail to thoroughly assess the company's investment possibilities because their emotions lead them to act hastily rather than carefully. Following Berkshire Hathaway Vice Chairman Charlie Munger's advice on regulating your emotions, for example, could be a helpful step in maximizing your chances of profiting from this market meltdown. It's difficult to be cool when stock prices are dropping and your portfolio is losing value. Negative news flow, negative economic statistics, and pessimism among other investors can all complicate the task. Buying equities during weak markets is considerably more difficult. Many investors may be concerned about the long-term financial consequences of a market catastrophe. This may cause them to delay investing in strong businesses that have large margins of safety. Charlie Munger defined the situation as follows. The majority of people are too worried. Success requires patience, but aggression when the moment comes. Buying stocks during a market fall may cause some emotional distress in the short term, but it can result in high returns in the long run. As Munger argues, adopting a long-term perspective and actively adding outstanding enterprises to your portfolio while they're still offering good value for money will improve your long-term profits. In a market crisis, worried investors may seek solace from their peers. They may be concerned about the stock market's outlook, for example. This may cause individuals to imitate their peers' conduct, which in many cases means deferring stock purchases until the economy's outlook improves. Following your peers, on the other hand, is unlikely to help you outperform the stock market in the long run. It's more likely that you'll see returns that are comparable to the whole market, mimicking the herd foster's regression to the mean, stated Munger. Copying the decisions of other investors is unlikely to be a viable strategy over term if you want to outperform the market. To beat the stock market, you must be willing to not just avoid but also go against the herd. When investor consensus is strong, as it is during bear markets, this may not be an easy process. 
Being independent of your peers' opinions, on the other hand, can help your portfolio's prospects. Although a market meltdown can cause investors to feel fearful, it can also lead to overconfidence. This can lead to investors failing to evaluate a variety of considerations while purchasing equities. In a bear market, for example, you can't focus on the low prices available and overlook a company's financial position or economic moats. No prudent pilot, no matter how brilliant his talent and experience, fails to employ a checklist, Munger once stated. Investing the time to investigate all essential components of a company before purchasing it is likely to be a wise investment. It may enable you to uncover potential issues with a potential investment as well as set aside your feelings about a certain firm or industry. This could help you outperform the market and boost your long-term returns. Additionally, on Saturday, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, addressed the company's first in-person annual meeting since 2019, taking aim at Bitcoin and the current market, which they feel has devolved into a gambling parlor. Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway vice chairman Charlie Munger answered questions for hours that revealed their views on how Bitcoin is anything but beneficial. Munger, on the other hand, was not so nice to the digital asset, labeling it dumb and evil for making the country appear terrible, according to him. I try to stay away from things that are foolish, evil, or make me appear awful in my life, and Bitcoin accomplishes all three. First and foremost, it's dumb because it'll almost certainly go to zero, he remarked. It's bad because it puts the Federal Reserve System in jeopardy. Third, it makes us look dumb in comparison to China's communist leader. He was astute enough to declare Bitcoin legal in China. Munger's candor about his stance on Bitcoin is nothing new, but the grounds for his opposition have changed. His most recent remarks reflect his support for the monetary system, his confidence that Bitcoin will crash, and his anxiety over America's image in comparison to China. Munger characterized the Bitcoin mania in 2018 as absolutely insane. I've done so well in life by employing organized rational thinking that I never wanted to delve into disciplines like AI, the non-agenarian replied when asked about artificial intelligence. He declared he will never buy a cryptocurrency during the Sun Hearts and Minds conference in Sydney in December 2021, indicating his disdain in engaging in this ridiculous booms. Elon Musk, the former CEO of Tesla and currently the CEO of Twitter, recalled Munger's forecasts about Tesla's failure in 2009. Musk agreed with Munger that Tesla would most likely fail, but he was willing to give it a shot nonetheless. Tesla's market capitalization is at $902 billion. Munger did confess, though, that while the asset appears to be functioning, he has a different perspective toward it. I want to generate money by selling them healthy products, not unhealthy products. Munger compared cryptocurrencies to a venereal cancer earlier this year. I'm proud of myself for avoiding that. It's almost like a venereal disease. It's beyond reproach. This coincides with Berkshire Hathaway's $1 billion investment in Newbank, a pro-crypto digital bank in Brazil that they considered as having development potential. Though its investment department, the bank offers a Bitcoin ETF. We are more cautious than ever, given Charlie Munger's dire predictions for the stock market's future. We believe that Munger's techniques will be really valuable to us, and it's never a burden to conduct our own study before investing and minimizing risks. So that brings an end for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such great content.